an honorable man, a family man, a working man, a community man, an honest man that was at a grocery store in a parking lot. You gotta go sometime, you know what I mean? I know he ain't gonna be on this earth for a long time, but one day I'll be up there with her, one day in heaven. The thing is that uh, Aaron was laid back, cool, calm. He was a mentor to me. She just was just unbelievable, the way she took care of us, the way she cared for us and sacrificed uh, uh, for us. She was an example for all of us to follow. He was lively. He was real lively, energetic, funny. Sometimes he wasn't funny, but he thought he was. Right. <laughs> I, I mourn with her when she was unhappy, and when she was happy, we'd celebrate. She was just, um, we had that closeness. One of her favorite sayings, she got a thousand of them. This is a question, suggestion. Meaning also that we're gonna go with what she said, because it's just it's a question, but this is what we're gonna do. We all just people. <laughs> you know, you strip all the all the the tags. You're a person. And somebody gonna be hurting if you're gone. Because you don't come back. They were mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, best friends. The youngest, 32, the oldest, 86. Over the next half hour, we will honor the lives of the 10 people who became innocent victims of a cowardly act of hate. 10 beautiful lives taken away too soon, but 10 lives that touched those who knew them and now in tragedy have touched so many more. Among them, Deacon Hayward Patterson. Family member Mercedes Patterson tells our Eileen Buckley his heart was full of faith and love. He didn't deserve that. Our community didn't deserve that. No one deserves that. It's wrong. Patterson referred to her relative as a loved one, a man who loved his family and his community. An honorable man, a family man, a working man, a community man, an honest man that was at a grocery store in a parking lot. The pain is extremely raw for Lenny Lane with the Father's Organization, who tells me Patterson was a deacon at his church. Can I get you a it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Sorry. It's broken. Lane posting this message on his Facebook page saying his heart is broken into a million pieces over his beloved Deacon Patterson of State Tabernacle Church. Lane says Deacon Patterson would often drive people to the top store on Jefferson who didn't have transportation. Deacon Patterson was the ones that transported them back and forth to their homes so they could, that they can continue to, to survive. His heart is broken. He has sleep. He has eats, and as a mother, what am I supposed to do to help him get through this? I need a village to help me raise and be here for my son because he has no father. The youngest person to lose their life on Saturday, 32-year-old Roberta Drury. Family and friends describe Roberta as a ray of sunshine, as someone who literally put her life on hold to come to Buffalo to help another family member. Here's our Michael Schwartz. Roberta Drury, the youngest killed on Saturday at 32 years old, originally from Cicero, New York, just outside of Syracuse. She moved to Buffalo to take care of her brother as he battled leukemia. Two candles and white flowers now lay on the bar inside the Dalmatia Hotel in Buffalo, owned by her brother. Friends who knew her there say she was a bright light, 
a ray of sunshine and someone who was always willing to help. Loved ones plan to honor her selflessness and memory in the coming days. Like so many of the victims, Margus Morrison, age 52, was just going about his day doing what we all have done, running to the supermarket on a Saturday afternoon to pick some things up for dinner. His family describes him as happy and full of energy. His brother tells our Febin Cassahoon he now has to be strong for the six children now left without their role model, their father. He was cool, he was bubble, he was bubble. He was a nice guy, full of energy. That was my dude, he was a nice guy. You would never spot 52-year-old Marcus Morrison without his younger brother, Frederick. The brothers, who were just two years apart, were inseparable. Some would even describe them as two peas in a pod. He was lively. He was real lively, energetic, funny. Sometimes Joker. he wasn't funny, but he thought he was right. funny. <laughs> 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 and while the family continues to mourn, they find solace in knowing their beloved kin left them with lots to laugh about. Frederick tells me the last thing the two did together was grab a beer and plan for their next family gathering, which would have been this past weekend. Margus leaves behind six children, the oldest 24 and the youngest only six years old. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them because they, they lost their daddy in a bad situation. It's going to happen like that. It's an unexplainable pain that no family should have to go through and the kind of senseless killings of black people that should have been left in the 1800s and never really should have happened at all. The question is why? Because you don't like the skin color. You still have hatred and prejudice in every city. So how you deal with the hatred and the bigotry, you ignore it. But then nobody ever expect a loved one are going to get slaughtered. Family members and friends will always remember Marcus, but when the freshness of this tragedy begins to fade, the family hopes the Buffalo community will heal together. The community already torn and broken up. Now together, the community got to come together as a whole. When you think about people who are passionate about this community, people who truly love the city of Buffalo, remember the name Catherine Massey. At the age of 72, make no mistake about it, Catherine was full of life and love. And among the many things she was passionate about was reducing gun violence in her beloved Queen City. She's being remembered now as a committee of one. Her sister spoke with our Ashley Rowe describing Catherine's community activism as her superpower. Catherine Massey's family likes to say the headstrong 72-year-old is a committee of one, even refusing help mowing the lawn. One of her favorite sayings, she got a thousand of them. This is a question, suggestion. Meaning also that we're going to go with what she said, because it's, it's a question, but this is what we're going to do. And that determination was one of her superpowers as a community activist. Betty Jean Grant met Kat in 2001, and together they grew the grassroots organization We Are Women Warriors. What motivated her? I think passion and love of Buffalo. Grant says Kat was a master communicator. Last year, she published an editorial in the Buffalo News about reducing gun violence. And as an advocate for education, Kat was not one to mince words at Buffalo school board meetings. It reeks of self-interest and is outrageously devoid of a morsel of student-centric concern. On Saturday afternoon, Kat's brother dropped her off at the tops on Jefferson Avenue. Her sister Barbara says it was painful trying to find out if Kat was among the 10 who died. We were up at tops for almost eight hours. I talked to probably, I don't know how many police officers, please just let me know my sister had. And they would come back and said nothing, nothing. The coroner finally confirming the news they were dreading. And she was crying, the coroner. She said, I'm so sorry, we got cat. As we look through photos together, Barbara tells me the most gut-wrenching part of what she's going through. It only hit me at nighttime that he shot her in her face and he took that tube away from us. I'm good. That's the hardest thing when they said to me, you don't want to see her. What you mean? I said, shot her chest. Oh, you're so sorry. Yeah, but we're going to do it right. She'll be proud. We do her proud. But I just couldn't believe we can't see her. The first victim to be publicly identified was a man who died a hero, retired Buffalo police officer Aaron Salter Jr. 
Salter was 55 years old. He was a beloved security guard at Tops, a familiar face for customers and who they got to know through the years as they came through the doors of their neighborhood supermarket. And as Michael Schwartz shows us, those who knew him well remember him as a man who always greeted people with kindness. We remember Aaron Salter, the retired Buffalo police officer who was a security guard at Tops Saturday being held a hero around the nation. That includes paying tribute to the Buffalo police officer, Aaron Salter. President Biden mentioning Salter at the White House during Monday's Medal of Valor ceremony to public safety officers. Who gave his life trying to save others. Workers inside Tops told ABC News Salter ran toward the shooter with his gun drawn. His actions gave somebody else a chance to run. Had he not took action like he did, he'd be a, probably a, another person like him, you know? Yvonne King, who grew up near the supermarket, says she would see Salter on her daily runs to Tops. He just was a nice guy that did his job. Salter's friend spoke to ABC's Stephanie Ramos. That's surprising? No, you, not at you, all. I mean, being called a I mean, the thing is, Aaron was laid back, cool, calm. He was a mentor to me. Roscoe C. Henderson says he knew Salter's late mother, who also worked at a local top store years ago. Salter was 55 years old, never to be forgotten for his service and the lives he saved on the city's darkest day. I, I thought he was going to change the world. And now he'll be just remembered as a person that saved lives. And saved lives he did, a true hero. Pearl Young, to know her was to love her. She called the Jefferson Avenue neighborhood her home for years. Miss Young was 77 years old, and everyone we talked to who knew her said the wife, mother, and grandmother embodied the spirit of the city of good neighbors, a role model for people in her church and community. Her family members tell our Taylor Epps how Pearl Young lit up a room and lived up to her name. I mourned with her when she was unhappy, mm -hmm. and when she was happy, we'd celebrate. She was just, um, we had that closeness. Close friends for 58 years. Gloria Anderson and Pearl Young often traveled together. They were together on Saturday at a prayer breakfast. Marvelous. It was marvelous. And that's why I knew we came from that to here. Anderson dropped her off at the tops on Jefferson Avenue, but never got to pick her up. You know what? I find solace in the fact that Aunt Pearl lived out the essence of who she was. She was a praying woman. Members of the Young family meeting with President Biden on Tuesday. He told them he hopes one day Pearl's memory can bring a smile to their lips before a tear to their eye. I'll get Absolutely. there. I'm not there yet, but I will eventually get there to that, that point because right now it's just too... Wrong. It's, it's really wrong. They tell me it was great to hear from the president, but they also want to hear from the parents of the shooter. I do want to hear from them. Somebody knew something. I mean, this wasn't just, uh, you know, let's let's play uh, toy soldiers. This was, you know, breaking guns to make them do things that they're not supposed to do. You know, getting armor, getting ammo, all the ammunition. You didn't hear anything. Pearl's niece, Michelle Spite, says she questions why the shooter wasn't caught sooner. But the problem is the biases, the inherent biases. I'm just going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. this, is the, yes. this is my feeling and I'm standing on it. Because had that happened and I did that, it would have been handled two different ways. Pearl's daughter Pamela hoping this sparks a change in the way we speak about race and the way we think about our neighbors. Instead of saying one nation under God, we need to say one community under God. Because if we considered ourselves truly a community, this wouldn't happen. It doesn't matter who you are. When those tears come down, I'm not crying tears where my tears look black and somebody else's tears look Hispanic. And I think that we need to start realizing that our tears are the same. As we remember all of the lives lost, the family of Andre McNeil is calling for justice. McNeil stopped into the tops on Jefferson to buy a birthday cake for his three-year-old son. His brother and nephew shared their story this week with our Jocelyn Person. I can't believe none of this. I, I'm, I'm just not. You know, I don't believe any of it. You know, my brother was taken. The last of my my line was taken from me. Vion Elliott and his daughter Linda are in mourning. Their beloved brother and uncle Andre McNeil was one of the ten people killed when the gunman opened fire Saturday inside a crowded tops on Jefferson Avenue. He just was. He was my brother. 
is all I had left, actually. You, you know, I lost my mother, I lost my father, your and, our ba- and our baby brother. And Andre was all I had left. Andre, who is from Auburn, New York, is being remembered as a beloved father, brother, uncle, and friend. A father, a loving person. How old are you? I'm 15. He's going to be missed. Yes. An athlete. He's a roar. He's a hero. And he, he was so South sweet. The funniest TikToks. Just yeah. all of it. You, he was such a good man. And I, I don't know. You, you didn't even try to get to know him. Andre McNeil was at the tops to buy a birthday cake for his three-year-old son. I my uncle back and I know that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But okay. I want okay. justice for him. I don't want that man out. I don't want him on the streets he needs to see what real life is and get everything he has coming to him because not only did you take it from me you took it from my dad and you took it from his whole family including his three-year-old son on his birthday you're an evil sick wicked person we can share some uplifting news tonight. Bills offensive lineman Dion Dawkins heard McNeil's story and is planning to host a big birthday party for his young son. It wasn't a birthday cake, but strawberry shortcake that Celestine Cheney was picking up. She was 65 years old, a former employee at New Era Cap. And as Febin Kassoon shows us, this attack robbed her loved one of a woman who had already survived so much. A single photo showcasing the bright smile 65-year-old Celestine Cheney brought with her everywhere she went. Her legacy shining throughout this living room, filled with various family members, including her only child, grandchildren, and her sister Joanna Daniels, who was in the top supermarket with her the day of the shooting. She loved her family. She loved to be a rider. And you know, she just had a birthday last week. It was her birthday last week. Celestine Cheney's sister recounts the horrific moments on that Saturday as their quick trip to the grocery store to grab strawberry shortcake turned into a day of terror she and her family will never forget. We was on our way out the door and we heard we heard the shots, but we thought by being summer, you know how the firecrackers. So we thought we, we kept moving. As we was going out, everybody was running back in and somebody knocked her down. Daniels had assumed Celestine had gotten back up and was close behind her as they ran, yeah. unaware of what was happening in the store. When I got to the back, because everybody was telling you, go to the coolest, which is in the back of the store. And they opened the back door, so they said, come on, go out the back door. So we all went out the back door. It was a bunch of people, so I'm looking for my sister. That unfathomable reality, something Daniels continues to relive since that very dreadful day. My sister survived breast cancer and three aneurysm surgeries to go to the grocery store to get killed. I get the actual video. (laughs) And I watch the video. Unacceptable. And he shot my mom once. My mom was was like was laying on the ground. He went and reloaded. And he shot my mom again. A shooting rampage by a man filled with hate. Just because pigment was deeper than his. Gutting families like Celestine Cheney's and leaving many with unanswered questions. Anger. Hurt. You don't. You have to Confusion. We all just people. <laughs> you know, you strip all the all the the tags. You're a person. Tears of agony, knowing their Celestine won't be walking through their doors to greet them with a warm smile. But the family finds solace, knowing that she has left a legacy of bright futures and smiles just like hers, while the legacy of the 18-year-old suspects became non-existent on that Saturday afternoon. People coming, you know, calling and, you know, coming by the house and, you know, condolences and everything. You know, it just makes you feel so good. After spending some time on a beautiful Saturday along the water in Buffalo, 62-year-old Geraldine Talley stopped by the Tops on Jefferson with her fiancé. It was supposed to be just another Saturday, but as we all know, it was anything but that. Her fiancé, Gregory Allen, told our Jocelyn Person the couple's last few hours were filled with laughter and love. 
I met Jerry seven years ago at Transition Services. I asked her, was she single? She said, yes. After that, we hooked up together at the time. But like I say, she was a nice lady and enjoyed our life together. And I always I love her. Gregory Allen holds up a picture of 62-year-old Geraldine Talley. The sweet Miss Talley loved to bake, as it is evident from pictures on her Facebook page. Gregory tells me he shared his final moments with her before the massacre happened. Before I went to Tusk, we was at the Foot of the Ferry. She liked Foot of the Ferry. So we was there for like three hours, laughing and talking, having iced tea, you know what I'm saying, potato chips. We was touching each other, laughing with each other, stuff like that. And she said, um, she put lotion on her arms and stuff, you know, stuff like that she was telling me when I get back home. But she was happy. We walked in tops and um, went down the aisle, about two stores down in the aisle in the front, made a left. She went down the aisle with the buggy. Then she said, told me she forgot the iced tea. So I got the iced tea and went around the corner and the guy started shooting in the front of the cash register. They were shooting back and forth. The guard, everybody was shooting back and forth. During those horrific moments, Gregory lost his beloved Jerry. The guy kept shooting. So what happened there, he was shooting at me because he seen me. So I had to dodge all these bullets. In like 15 minutes, he was shooting down these aisles, trying to get hold on to me. So I did a right turn, hit the floor, and I got back off the floor. Then the bullets were right, right past my head. So I had to go inside that white cooler. But Gregory squeezed himself in the cooler. Then he couldn't find me. So we about about an inch from here. He walked right slow. I thought he seen me, but he didn't see me. I thought he seen me. So he walked right past me, trying to look for me, but he didn't see me. So after that, he looked, he went in down front, back and forth. And after that, he went out the door. Gregory tells me police came, but he wasn't allowed to search for Miss Tally. Yet Gregory tells me he will be with her when the time comes. You got to go sometime. You know what I mean? I know he ain't going to be on this earth for a long time, but one day I'll be up there with her, one day in heaven. The matriarch of the Whitfield family of Buffalo was Ruth Whitfield. At 86 years old, she was also the oldest victim. Mrs. Whitfield went to the Tops on Jefferson to pick up food after she visited her husband in a nursing home, something she did just about every single day. She was a mother of four and grandmother of eight. Her son, retired Buffalo Fire Commissioner Garnell Whitfield, told our Ed Dranch his mother taught him how to love. My mom was an angel. She was our hero. Garnell Whitfield, retired Buffalo Fire Commissioner, remembering his mother, 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield, as a woman of faith who loved unconditionally. She just was just unbelievable the way she took care of us, the way she cared for us and sacrificed uh, uh, for us. She was an example for all of us to follow. But her example of love and faith and trust was no match for a man who police say came to this supermarket with hate in his heart. Ruth was shot and killed inside Tops on Saturday afternoon. We want to call this what it is. It's, it's racism, it's hate, it's white supremacy, and that's why we're here, because we feel a need to call it what it is. Ben Crump is the Whitfield family attorney. He says Ruth's legacy will be defined by what is done to keep others safe in the wake of such tragedy. Hopefully we can get some meaningful federal legislation from this tragedy here in Buffalo so we can prevent some of this senseless hate that seems to keep causing people so much harm, not only in New York, but all across America. Uh, she would want to use this tragedy to make some positive change some way because that's the kind of person she was. Ruth's legacy. Ruth's memory, Ruth's family, now without their matriarch. Carnell, how do you stay so strong and, and, and how do you provide this strength for your family now? Um, I don't consider myself to be strong. Uh, I'm strong because of my mother. I'm strong because of the support uh, and because of the love that she poured into me. I'm strong because of my hope and my faith in Jesus Christ. And the family of Ruth Whitfield gathered this week at the Buffalo Church where Mrs. Whitfield sang in the choir. Their emotions overwhelming.
very hard for us to, to handle right now. You know, we make no apologies for our suffering and our pain. You can see it. Yeah. We, we're not going to apologize for that. But we're not just hurting. We're angry. Yeah. We're mad. This shouldn't have happened. No, it shouldn't. We do our best to be good citizens, to be good people. We believe in God. Yeah. We trust him. Right. We treat people with decency. Yes. And we love even our enemies. And you expect us to keep doing this over and over and over again. Over. over again. Forgive and forget. While the people we elect and trust in offices around this country do their best not to protect us, not to consider us equal, not to love us back. What are we supposed to do with all of this anger, with all of this pain? The pain of this past week runs deep in western New York, and especially in the tight-knit Jefferson Avenue community where this happened. But from neighbors and strangers to sports heroes, this tragedy has shown us the pride of a neighborhood and the resilient spirit of a city, our city. May the memories, the spirit of the 10 lives we lost, stay with us always. We visit the memorial where to show the love for them and you've all shown by the supermarket. And uh, Celestine Cheney, 65 years old, brain cancer survivor, church goer, bingo player, went to buy strawberries to make her favorite shortcake. A loving mother and a grandmother. Roberta Drury, 32, beloved daughter and sister. Moved back home to help take care of her brother after his bone marrow transplant. She went to buy groceries for dinner. The center of attention who made everyone in the room laugh and smile when she walked in. Andre McNeil, 53, worked at a restaurant. Went to buy his three-year-old son a birthday cake. Son selling a birthday, asking where's daddy. <clears throat> Catherine Massey, 72, a writer and an advocate, who dressed up in costumes at schools and cut the grass in the park and helped in local elections, the glue of the family and the community. Marcus Morris, 52, school bus aide buy snacks for a weekly movie night with the family, survived by his wife and three children and a stepdaughter, the center of their world. Hayward Patterson, 67, father, church deacon, fed the homeless at the soup kitchen, gave rides at the grocery store to neighbors who needed help, putting food in the trunk of others when he took his final breath. Solder, 55, retired Buffalo police officer for three decades. Three decades. Loved electric cars. Hero who gave his life to save others on a Saturday afternoon. And had that man not been wearing that vest that he purchased, bulletproof vest, a lot of lives would have been saved. A beloved father and husband. Geraldine Talley, 62, expert banker and known for her warm, gentle personality, friend everybody, devoted mother and grandmother. Ruth Whitfield, 88, beloved wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sang in the church choir, a caretaker of her husband, bringing him clean clothes, cutting his hair, holding his hand every day she visited him in the nursing home heart as big as a head. Pearl Young, 77, a mother, grandmother, missionary of God, public school teacher, who also ran the local food pantry. Loved singing, dancing, and her family. 